Callum Murray and right now a virtual treat ahead of the new championship season. Watford's Ben Foster, Swansea's Wayne Rightledge and Bournemouth's Lewis Cook join me. Hi guys. Hi Colin. Hi. Uh... Okay, that's the least amount of enthusiasm I've, I've had on a call all throughout <laughs> the COVID-19 pandemic. So thank you very much for that. Uh, listen, let's start with you Ben. The time between the seasons shorter than, than ever and less time to recover emotionally from relegation as a senior player has that been really really important to change the mindset quickly um yeah to be fair it was obviously it's, a, it's disappointing to go down the way we did but um i think you know the lockdown gave us plenty plenty of time to sort of get it into our heads that it was definitely going to be a possibility you know you don't want to restart after the after the lockdown thinking that you're going to get relegated you want to give it as good a shot as possible um which i think we did i think we we you know we kept it going until the last game of the season but um no it's it's a you've got to sort of refresh and attack it from a new perspective and and that's what we're looking to do this season yeah no i think you're 37 officially and it might be a slight show busy but with, with a with a goalkeeper it doesn't matter does it ben it, it i mean you, you know it's still see it's like being a 28 year old midfielder isn't it yeah just like that just... <laughs> yeah just like that um I don't know. I, I think I have a few more creaks and, um, than a than a twenty eight year old. Um, but no, I think a goalkeeper, half of it for me is in your head anyway. You know, you um, you're so sort of well drilled at what you do, training sort of. You know, for me, I don't really need to train every day of the week. I can only, you know, I can luckily enough, I can train sort of two, three days a week and and turn out on the Saturday, and it, it seems to go all right for me. So as long as that keeps going like that, I'm happy. Do do you at this stage it, your your day to day and your role within the the dressing room is it changed massively in terms of maybe not as involved in the dressing room day to day you certainly don't have any control over the music I'm pretty sure of that and and do you become the kind of calm father figure a bit more do you feel more confident in having those conversations with younger players. Yeah, without doubt, that's like I say, that for me, half of, half of the battle of football is in your head. Um, so if I can sort of impart some of my sort of wisdom almost on some of the younger lads, because you see nowadays they live their life through social media and sometimes they get in from a game and straight away they're on Twitter, Instagram, just trying to look out to see what the response is to how they've performed. And I'm trying to say, lads, stay away from it and just concentrate mm. on your performance. Listen to the people that matter and that's, that's all you can do, all you should do. Yeah, and on that point, I suppose the one big positive reinforcement you can say to to, to every younger player in that dressing room is, is listen, I've been here before with Watford. Last time I was here with Watford, we found absolute glory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, you know, we, we were lucky enough to do it in the 2005-2006 season um, and we went up through the playoffs as well. And for me... You know, getting promoted out of the championship, first and foremost, is ridiculously hard. It's such a tough and competitive league. Um, so to get promoted is brilliant, first and second position. But if you could guarantee doing it one way, then you'd, you'd do it through the playoffs. So it was it was the, one of the best experiences of my life is, is going through that emotional roller coaster. And, you know, thankfully it worked out well for us. And hopefully some of that will, will bear us in good stead going forward as well. What you also need are, are players that you know care about the club wherever the club are which brings us on nicely to Wayne and Wayne the decade up the decade the big one zero which is becoming something that I'll say very few times as a journalist because it used to be a player being at the club for 10 years wasn't that unusual now it, now it is it must be immense pride in that for you yeah I mean I've, there's a lot of pride in it for me and obviously for my family um it's obviously well documented before I got here. I was here, there and everywhere, to be honest with you. But I found the place that I've settled with. I feel like I've learned a lot since I've been here. And like I said, I'm, I'm still here now. So hopefully it can continue for a little longer. Tell me a little bit about that because it, it, it's very matter of fact the way you sat. But it's a great perspective to have in your mid-twenties where you're, you, you say, do, do you know what, it's more than just these. And it's more than just that. And it's about making sure that I've got a, a balance, a life balance in there, that I have that foundation and that, that grounded and happiness on and off the pitch. Is that, that's kind of what Swansea given you, hasn't it? The, the balance. 100%. You couldn't agree more. I mean, 
when you're when you're obviously younger and you look at life, you want to play, you want to play, you want to play. Sometimes you make judgment and you make decisions of haste, really. Sometimes when you look back on your career, sometimes you think you maybe I would have just waited something out or if I would have just been a little bit more patient. But like I said, places find you at the right time and the right circumstance in your career. And I found this place at the right time. And like I said, it's worked out well for me and I'm really happy and happy with how it's turned out. And given that, and given your connection with the club, how, how frustrating was the end of last season for you? I mean, you, you, you look at the, 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 the game of, at Reading, that dramatic final day, which was one of the best afternoons of football I've ever enjoyed. Lucky enough to have every game up, and it was we were screaming and falling on the floor and just punching the ceiling. It was unbelievable. But then, of course, missing with injury, so so it was a real frenetic end of the season for you. No doubt, really frustrating. Yeah, it was almost a bit sweet moment because obviously, I don't know on the outside how it looked, but. We was obviously trying to get where we needed to get to, and obviously on the last day, it was a long shot, but we had to believe on some. We had to believe in it, and that's what we did. And obviously, on that last day, we obviously turned around a what was a crazy deficit. It must have been lovely to watch in the studio, and obviously to document on. So we turned that around, and obviously we played. Um, obviously Brentford, who are a very good team, and obviously we just couldn't get the job done, and they played really well. At, um, obviously, the last game at Griffin Park, so. I think it'll fuel us this year to obviously try and go one step further, but obviously there's a lot of work to do and lots of ins and lots of outs, as you've obviously said before. And so we've got to see how we go at the start of the season and, and take it game by game. And hopefully things click and we can do one better this year. Yeah, because you, you know, as far as I'm concerned, pro probably more not something for you to comment on, but I think you overachieved. I think you, you were be above expectations and it felt like a lot of that when the season resumed came from the manager, came from Steve Cooper, that, that sort of belief, that kind of like, you know, achieve, you know, that he seems an aspirational man uh, to have as your manager. Talk to me a, a bit about what it's like playing under him. I mean, he's very good. I mean, he's obviously, obviously everyone who knows his CV, CV through the obviously the England, the youth setup and stuff. And obviously through that, he's, he's won trophies and he wants to take that into his, obviously his management career. And, I think that's what he gives us a lot. He gives us a lot of uh, tactical information and obviously way different ways to play the game as such. But obviously his belief and what he feels that we are capable of, I think we saw last year wrap up on the team. And obviously, like you said, on the outside, it's probably the overachieved. But he was always drumming on that, yes, it's possible and we can do it if you believe, I believe in you and X, Y, Z. And his staff do the same. So it's good, especially with a young team. It's obviously with a young team. It's obviously difficult sometimes, but someone that gives them belief and lets them play, gives them the right advice and the right things to do, it obviously shows it works. So hopefully that can continue this year. Yeah, phase like that, and you're right. It's um, it's much more difficult to sort of say this is how it's going to go and that's how it's going to go because even the gap between the two seasons is ri ridiculous. Every everything is complete, completely different. Um, just finally, do you agree with what Ben was saying about sort of as you get? I think you're 35 now, aren't you? And you don't, you, I mean, you, ben, ben looks his age, you don't. Um, so I just, <laughs> it's hard to even see that you're uh, even in the same generation. But um, do you have to box a little bit more clever, especially with what was a hectic end of the season, but also this season? I mean, it, that, that slight bit of con condensed is, it, the fix list is crazy. There's 24 midweek games. Ben he's already said uh, you have to box a bit clever. Um, I'm a person that obviously likes to train all the time, so this year I've been told that I've got to bring myself in and pull back a little bit. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But you already said it's, it's, it's a hugely condensed season this year, so the, the depth of the squad is obviously going to be very important and obviously keeping players fit and especially the key ones fit will have a drastic effect on obviously teams um, form and the performance and we even up at the end of the season to be honest with you. Should clarify given the reaction it just had 24 midweek fixture list that includes every round of the Carabao Cup so you, you know unless you're going to make it all the way to the final there's some of those you'll have off 
So it would only <laughs> if you play 24 midweek games, it'll be the best season of your life. So probably more in around 18, 19 will be I'll, I'll be be the be the average. Uh, Lewis, sorry it's taken me so long to come to these two. Just ask some questions and they give it that for ages. So I, I <laughs> apologise for that. There's end of an era, isn't it? An absolute end of an era uh, at Bournemouth, but it comes with real continuity and it's something that we see at clubs like Brentford as well. Um, with Eddie Howe going, but Jason Tindall is somebody who just knows the club inside out. Yeah, definitely. Like I say, um, it's a big change and it's something that we have to adapt with and like you say, with such a short turnaround, it's kind of it's kind of come at a good time to be honest. We've we've got straight back at it and just got training again, really, and it's it's served as well. So hopefully we can uh, have some new new ideas and fresh faces and, and kick on. Right, exactly. And so, and, and in terms of that, and as we touched on on with the other guys, what's it, what's it been like having literally no time to catch your breath, especially if you've been relegated? Where the I think getting away from the training ground for a long period of time, getting away from even a positive club culture for a long period of time is so, so important to, you know, the healing the wounds. But you haven't had to do that. It's much more like a plaster ripping on you go. Yeah, definitely. I think I think you said, like Ben said, the, the mentality is a massive thing in football. And you, especially when you get relegated, it's tough. It's tough for everyone. Um, they say it could be the worst thing, but it can also be the best thing. Uh, a lot of young players in the team and, it's something that they'll they'll understand and, and, and why we went down and things like that and, and have to bounce back from it and learn from the mistakes. So, yeah, it's been tough with the short window. Um, and again, a couple of weeks to get away and, and recuperate. But obviously, there's a bit of work to be done um, to improve on last year and, and try and bounce back with, with good performances and, and push on this season. And what about yourself, just from a personal point of view? I, I absolutely staying fit must be at the very, very top of your list Lewis because we, we know a fit Lewis Cook in the championship is magic yeah definitely I think it's something I've had to uh, adapt in, in myself and, and make sure I'm 100% fit all the time and make sure I'm doing the right things and, and keeping fit so yeah I felt like last season towards the end was quite tough and um, a few niggles here and there but I've gone away the last couple of weeks and, and relaxed and feeling good um, training's been great and like I say, I'm uh, looking forward to the season and feeling good. And you're going to go in in it in those games that you, you've had in the Premier League, and that, that Ben knows you go in with no expectation. You know, you're expected to get some four 0 by Liverpool. You're expected to get some four 0 by Man City. Whoever they play, they expect that the Championship has got probably right now 14, 15, 16 chairman telling their manager that their expectation is the playoffs. The, the, the back to that it's crazy and it, and it, I tell you what since you were last here it's even worse the amount of teams who genuinely could push for the playoffs it's even more competitive and you're going to be one of those now you're one of the big dogs every team's going to want to knock off yeah I think it's a, it's a bit of pressure obviously coming down from the Premier League you've got to perform you've got Premier League players and um, I always remember in the champion championship and everyone said the same thing anyone can beat anyone it's a it's a crazy league, um, a lot of highs and a lot of lows. You just got to try and get on that run. You got to get on a few few games at the start, win a few games in a row. And it can be towards the end of the season. You can win these games and, and really push up the table. So it's a tough league, but it's a, a lot of entertainment and yeah, it's a, there's a lot of games to be played. So that's good. You're right. It's time to redefine consistency because it's completely different when it comes to the consistency. Three, we, yeah, I I don't think. It, Listen, we got to just bring these two down to earth, win. So, two, you know, if you've got a run of four games, five games in the, in the championship, you're picking up two wins, two draws and a, a, and a defeat. I think that defines championship consistency, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's that a crazy game. That quite far, wouldn't it? <laughs> What's that? I said that would get you quite far, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's going to have you right in the mix. Lewis, it's a com it's a completely you know absolutely different this season. Yeah, definitely. I think I think if you had that at the start of the season, you'd be you'd be relatively happy. You'd be up there and stuff. But like you say, it was in the season. You see someone at the top of the league losing to someone at the bottom of the league, and people are scrapping for their for their lives at the bottom, and people trying to push promotion. They've got the same kind of the same goal really. So yeah, it's a it's, it's a fun league. It's it's entertaining. It's fast paced, and hopefully we can get some of the fans back in and, and get the atmosphere. Yeah, and what what's um, probably 
straight straight to you with this, Lewis, and and you, you, yeah, you can avoid the question. But all, you've had one of the players that have had real transfer transfer speculation around you, and the thing with that is, it usually would happen when you're on holiday, and when you're completely. But it's the, these are happening when you're back at training, which changes the dynamic massively. You know, do you, do you get involved in it, or do you just try and completely just leave it to the others that that are managing your career? You just got to focus on on the now and, and making sure that you're you're ready for the season because it's going to come around quick. Some players might even play some some games and then and then leave after that. So I think everyone, if their if their agenda is to leave, is is going to make sure they're fit leading up to the game. So when they if they do go, they're ready. But everyone's in the same situation, obviously, with the uh, financial side of things since since COVID and. It's tough, but everyone's in the same boat. Yeah, and hopefully, uh, you know, I know we all come from the same place, but October, they're saying, Ben, they reckon, hopefully going to see some fans back in the stands. And I think even if it's only 1,000 or 2,000 at each ground or 2,500, I think it will make a hell of a difference. Yeah, that's the thing for me is um, it's that that... You noticed it so much, you know. You, I think we we took for granted how how big a part fans play in in the whatever football is. You know, they are the, one of the biggest parts in it. Because when we got back, the first game it was just ridiculously weird, and then you almost got sort of normalised to it. But you just don't get the same buzz. And for me, the the whole point of a uh, of playing professional football is that three o'clock kickoff buzz where you see it etched on the faces of all the fans you see how much it means to them and um it will be it will be brilliant for i, I guarantee everybody will say the same thing as well they, they can't wait until fans are back because you know it means so much more and they give you so much more adrenaline and such such more of a buzz as well you're right i think when the only time that i was like forgot that there was no fans was actually that last day of the season which was so crazy it was impossible not to get carried away and i think it was the only afternoon that nobody on our afl team said Oh, it would have been better. With, you know, it was just so, so, but what was, I suppose, the plan, it would have been different. You must, must have, like, once back in the dressing room, must have been a real, like, if only it had been full, if only there had been fans. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I, have, to echo, I have to echo Ben, what you just said, Ben. You, you, you play, and the buzz that you get on the three o'clock kickoff, obviously, when you see everybody there, is something that's very, very hard to mimic. Obviously, with the, obviously with what happened again away at Reading, we obviously knew we needed goals, but there's this point there we didn't know where we was at. I mean, I think I scored the goal at the end, and I didn't know whether to celebrate to, to do anything. I didn't know if we need to run back because you just didn't know. And if you would have, if you would have switched the situation and put I don't know five thousand fans in the stadium, we we all would have known exactly where we were at, and it would have been a whole different scenario. So I think, like you just said, the quicker that we can get something back where we can get to a relative normality, even if it's a thousand, two thousand people, it doesn't matter. It makes a hell of a difference having people cheer you on or obviously <laughs> hate, hate on you. So it, it all makes a big difference. Right, absolutely. It's just that we do also romanticise now, Lewis, about having the fans back in the cheer us on, but that one misplaced pass when things aren't going well, you might not want them back as much. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, that's, that's part and parcel of football. That's why we play it, um, the pressure and stuff like that. So, the fans are the, fans are everything. I think it's it's not just the, the game. It's, it's it's the city. It's the, the place where you're from. And it's, it's massive. They want to be they want to be in the stadiums, enjoying their day, supporting the team. And it's something that we definitely miss as players, um, staff as well. So, hopefully, that can that can happen soon, and we can get that atmosphere, the buzz back, and and just bring football properly back. Yeah, exactly. Bottom line is it, it is about community as much as it is about results and that has a real effect as well. And the, the fans and their social groups and the people that, you know, go out and maybe the only time they see their grandfather that week, you know, to go to the match or it's the only time they sort of get quality time with their daughter. So it's about so much more in football. So can't wait to have them back in. Thank you for talking to me. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, yeah, good luck with the season ahead. Cheers, Thank you. Guys. Cheers. Thank you.